of the modern conveniences missing from the Game Boy Color is the ability to recharge the console instead of using disposable batteries. Existing ways to do this in the market have typically been reserved for more expensive modifications or complex workarounds using off-the-shelf components. But what if I were to tell you that there exists a custom designed kit to cleanly add this capability to your Game Boy Color? Let's take a closer look at this seemingly small PCB that brings modern charging capability to your Game Boy Color console. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. In today's episode, we're gonna be adding recharging capability to the Game Boy Color. And in this episode, we'll be uh, adding that capability to this yellow Game Boy Color. And this actually may look familiar to some of you. I've actually modded this Game Boy Color already using the McGuill backlit kit. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and mod this because the kit that I'll be installing in here is also from McGuill. And and I have it right here. And you'll see, you'll notice that it is a very small kit. And this actually came from Console 5, um, is the US supplier uh, for this kit. And it costs about $5, which is pretty inexpensive. And it is a really small kit, but it is custom designed for the Game Boy Color. And I'm actually really surprised. There are no videos on this kit on YouTube that I could find. And it's really interesting because this is specifically designed to recharge the Game Boy Color. And I have found other videos uh, that add that capability, but using more commercial uh, off the shelf products and heavily modifying the shell and the console to accommodate those parts. Whereas this unit uh, specifically is designed for the Game Boy Color. And what it does is it replaces the DC input on the bottom of, of the Game Boy Color with the uh, with this USB PCB, and what you do have to do is you do have to enlarge uh, that that opening. But uh, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to show you how to do that with some with some filing. And yeah, so small kit. Haven't seen any videos, so I do want to make one about it and then sort of give you my thoughts about it. But the other thing you're going to need to source is a 14500 format lithium polymer battery. Now. This one I actually bought on eBay. This is only 680 milliamp hours. These actually go up to, I believe, uh, 1300 milliamp hours or higher even maybe. Yeah, so basically you need to source these two components. This battery cost me probably between five and $10. So all in all, this kit will probably run you in the neighborhood of 10 to $15. Uh, so not too expensive. And it, it's really great because now we're gonna be able to recharge the Game Boy Color. Yeah, so I'm not gonna talk about this anymore. Um, basically, I'm gonna list here the tools and components that you'll need to do this modification. And uh, once you've gathered all those tools and components, we're gonna go ahead and uh, let's get started. All right, to get things started, grab your Game Boy Color. And of course, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna disassemble it and we're going to remove the motherboard. So first thing, remove the six tri-wing screws on the rear of the console. And of course, the three Phillips holding the motherboard in. Now, this is the area we're gonna desolder. This is the DC input and that is the DC input adapter that we're gonna take out. So go ahead and put your motherboard onto your PCB holder and uh, grab your solder sucker and remove the solder from these five points. And it really does help to have a solder sucker. I do highly recommend it. And this PCB holder is very useful for tasks like this. So we're gonna go ahead and clean up these joints. And while we're here, let's go ahead and desolder the positive battery terminal lead from the motherboard. And again, this PCB holder makes this job so easy. 
All right, so that's removed. And if you have this available, grab your Game Boy Color Power Adapter, and we're going to insert it into the jack. And this is a little trick. Uh, this will help us desolder it the rest of the way. So when you insert it, we're going to be applying downward pressure while heating up each of the various pads. And little by little, we'll be able to remove the power jack from the motherboard. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna prep the McWill USB PCB. Start off by removing the I.O. pins from the holder. Once removed, we're gonna place these I.O. pins in the four through holes on the bottom of the kit. Go ahead and put some flux and we're going to solder these in place and be sure not to use too much solder because we do need to make sure these will fit through the through holes on the motherboard. So make sure you use as little solder as possible. and grab a Q-tip and a little isopropyl alcohol and remove any of the residual flux. Great, so we're gonna go ahead and put the motherboard back on the PCB holder. And now we're gonna insert the McWill kit into the motherboard, making sure we're putting it in the correct place. And we're gonna press fit it in. And then once in place, flip the board around and we're going to solder it in place. And once soldered in place, we're going to go ahead and trim the legs. And it should look a little something like this. Next, we're going to cut ourselves two pieces of wire. Go ahead and strip the wires and twist them together because we're going to be soldering these two wires to the same pad on the McWill PCB. We're going to go ahead and tin the wire. and also tin the pad on the PCB McWill kit that we're gonna attach these wires to. All right, and then solder the wires in place. Notice that these two wires are going to the same single pad on the McWill kit. And then go ahead and take one of the wires, it doesn't matter which one, and solder it to the positive battery terminal on the motherboard. All right, great. So next we're gonna modify the shell so that it can fit the USB. And as you can see, I have a small filing kit, which I'll be using in order to accomplish this. The key to doing this is to take your time and just file a little bit of material away at a time, constantly checking to make sure that the fitment is okay. Here, I took a permanent marker to mark the size of the USB as best I could and use that as a guide. Again, patience is key here if you want a really good end result. Just file a little bit of material at a time and check your work. As you can see, we're getting closer to a good result. Just a little bit of fine tuning. And we have a pretty good fitment, so we're gonna stop right there. So next we're gonna need to solder the other wire to the battery contacts in the rear shell housing. Go ahead and remove the battery contacts from the rear shell housing. Tin the contact so we can prep it for soldering the wire. Once you've done that, go ahead and reinsert the battery contacts into the rear shell housing. 
and then go ahead and solder the wire, being careful not to melt the plastic on the rear shell housing. Alright, so basically the install is complete, so go ahead and put your buttons and membranes back in, and we're going to go ahead and reinstall the motherboard into the front shell housing. Go ahead and screw the motherboard in, and then button up the console with the six tri-wing screws. Go ahead and grab your lithium polymer battery and insert it into the lower battery well. Be sure to pay attention to the polarity of the battery and install the battery correctly. Close the battery door, plug it in, and we're done. All right, so we completed the mod. Uh, I'm actually really happy with the way it turned out. There are a few things I do wanna talk about though. Uh, after kind of playing around with it for a few hours, and uh, seeing uh, how it actually turned out. So one of the things I wanna talk about is when I initially was ordering the parts and I did order the battery, and it was a while ago, the, there are, I guess, a few different form factors. Obviously this is the 14500 form factor battery, but within that you can either buy that with or without a button top. And what I mean by that, um, on a conventional AA battery, the, there is that little uh, protrusion on the positive terminal on the battery, the, uh, the lithium polymer battery that I bought actually doesn't have that, so it wasn't making contact with any of the leads. Uh, if you do plan on doing this mod, I do recommend you do buy a battery with the button top already. A another thing you might wanna consider is uh, when you do purchase, again, the uh, lithium polymer battery, uh, make sure you do get the 14500 uh, form factor, uh, but there's actually different um, capacities. Uh, mine, like I said, has 680 milliamp hours, but According to McWill, you can get it up to, I guess, 1300 milliamp hours. And in his documentation, he claims that you can get eight to 10 hours of gameplay. I'm assuming it's with a non-modified Game Boy Color. Uh, you can expect eight to 10 hours from a 1300 milliamp hour battery. Now, I actually ran my own test on the 680 milliamp hour battery, um, and I'll, I'll run the time-lapse footage. And from a fully charged, uh, unit or from what I was assuming is a fully charged battery I was able to get about two hours and ten minutes of life from the unit which uh, For me is more than enough. I don't usually play more than you know a few minutes at a time So so I do think 680 is ample, but if you do want a larger capacity battery uh, Make sure you opt for that and they do sell them apparently up to 1300 milliamp hours So that's another thing you may want to consider Another thing you want to take note of, and this is also noted in McWill's documentation, is the charger that you're using. So you want to use a charger that doesn't output more than 5 volts at 1 amp um, per McWill's documentation. So what I ended up using was a, uh, an Apple iPhone charger. The Apple iPhone charger outputs at uh, 5 volts 1 amp, so, so this was perfect. And the other thing obviously you need to get is a, a USB mini cable, not a very common form factor anymore, uh, these USB uh, minis. So you do need to make sure you wanna get one of those in order for you to be able to plug it in uh, the Game Boy Color uh, using the McWill charging port. So one of the odd things about this modification is that you actually no longer use uh, both battery wells, you only use one of them, the bottom one. So what I actually did was, and I can show you with that in here, what I did was I made sure I put some marking in there. So forever, whoever uses this, when they charge it, there is that note in there. Maybe I should put it on the outside, but it does say to make sure you don't use a charger that exceeds uh, five volts, uh, one amp. So, so you can see that right there. So now I wanna go over the pros and cons of this modification. Uh, after doing it, there were a few things that I noticed. Uh, for the pros, I, I think, that in comparison to a lot of the modifications out there that do add the recharging capability to the Game Boy Color, 
This one's really nice because obviously the specific kit was meant for the Game Boy Color, so you don't really have to jerry-rig anything. The fit and finish is great, obviously depending on, on how you modify the shell. And that leads me to my first pro, which is this uh, kit actually requires minimal modification to the shell. So that's one great thing, minimal shell modification. Uh, the next pro is obviously the ability to add recharging capability to your uh, Game Boy Color is a little minor convenience, but again, it, it's not an absolute crucial modification. It's just sort of a nice feature. So the last pro that I'd like to talk about is the price. The price of this mod is about $5. I purchased this kit from Console 5. So, so yeah, I think uh, overall for this modification, uh, between five and $10 is, is a pretty reasonable price. All right, so now let's talk about the cons. Uh, one of the things that I found puzzling, and I didn't really realize it until I completed the install, is that there is no indicator light on on this uh, on the PCB. So essentially, you know, you don't know how much battery you have, and then when you plug it into charge, you really don't know when the charge is complete because you know typically modern electronics have LED indicator lights to uh, that either turn off or turn green to let you know that the charging has completed. But yeah, it's just kind of weird that there's no way to know when the unit has finished uh, charging. And the last con is the difficulty of the build. It, it's by no means an easy modification. It does require uh, quite a bit of soldering, some desoldering, minimal modification to the shell. It's not trivial, so I would say that's one of the cons is that this mod isn't, isn't the easiest. That, that's probably the last con, it's just the difficulty to reward ratio on this mod. All right, so there you have it. That's the McWill recharging kit for the Game Boy Color. You know, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you think this is a mod uh, that may be worth it for you to complete? So I do hope you did enjoy the video. If you do like content like this, please consider subscribing to the channel. I do release videos every Thursday, and as always, we'll see you next time.